Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Friedman. I'm the Chief of the Division of Liver Diseases, Professor of Medicine, and Dean for Therapeutic Discovery at Mount Sinai. Hi, I'm Dr. Doug Dietrich. I'm the Director of the Institute for Liver Medicine and a Professor of Medicine uh, at the Icon School of Medicine. So the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism has been very clear in defining what constitutes heavy drinking. Um, and it differs between men and women. For men, it's considered more than four drinks on any day or more than 14 drinks per week. And for women, it's three drinks per day or more than seven drinks per week. So uh, clearly women are more susceptible to the dangerous effects of alcohol. That's a very important question. And it, it, it speaks as much to the behavior around drinking alcohol as it does to the absolute amount. There's a very simple uh, questionnaire called the CAGE questionnaire that consists of four questions that physicians can use or patients can ask themselves to determine if they are at risk or have an alcohol problem. And CAGE is an acronym. And the first question is, have you ever felt that you should cut down on drinking? So that's the C. The second question is, have people annoyed you by criticizing your drinking? That's the A. Number three is, have you ever felt bad or guilty about your drinking? That's the G. And finally, have you ever had a drink first thing in the morning to steady your nerves or to get rid of a hangover? And that's E because it stands for eye opener. So it's generally believed if two or more of those questions are answered yes, then the individual needs to consider that they may have a drinking problem. And particularly uh, the last one, if they're drinking in the morning, uh, that's always a, a concerning sign about uh, indicating alcohol dependence. Uh, that's something that's happened a lot during the last two years of, of COVID. Um, you probably saw a lot of that on social media about day drinking because of COVID. They, people were locked up in their houses and they were joking about it. But uh, that's actually led to a real major problem. Um, it's not just the uh, sort of benign sipping Chardonnay. Uh, you know, at home, the, um, the numbers for alcohol-related deaths have dramatically and exponentially increased starting in, in, uh, in 2020, uh, uh, right coinc coinciding with the beginning of the, of the COVID uh, epidemic. So locking people up at home with COVID has actually caused a huge increase, not just in drinking, but in actually alcohol and drinking related death. And I might add also hospital admissions for alcoholic liver disease and liver transplantation for alcoholic liver disease. So it's tracked right through from the beginning of uh, the pandemic as Dr. Dieterich said. That's our, our number one uh, hospital admission still actually is alcohol related liver disease, which is a sort of a, a hangover from the, uh, from the COVID pandemic, if that indeed is over. I think if you stay within the limits that, that Scott mentioned, you know, we. Um, we counsel people too, which they don't understand. They think uh, it's different, but you know, it's the uh, the numbers that Scott uh, mentioned were uh, in drinks per day, and one drink is ten is absolutely ten grams of absolute alcohol. So that's the same as one and a half ounces of uh, hard liquor, or uh, six ounces of wine, or twelve ounces of beer. All contain. 10 grams of alcohol. So it doesn't matter what you drink, actually, uh, as long as you stay within those limits. Uh, so if, if you're a woman, that would be one glass of wine. If you're you were a man, that'd be two glasses of wine if you don't have any, um, any, any pre-existing liver disease. Yeah, that's a really important point, Doug. And I, just to uh, put a fine point on it, um, one cannot uh, comfort oneself in thinking, well, I'm only drinking beer, it's more dilute. Again, if you drink beer uh, to the same extent as you might drink a, a shot of whiskey or a glass of wine, even though the volume of the beer is greater, the absolute amount of alcohol is the same. So uh, one cannot try to deny the possibility of risky alcohol drinking because of the type of drink you're ingesting. Yeah, I, you know, I, I hear that a lot from patients. Oh, I only drink beer on weekends. Well, how much? do you drink on the weekend? Well, I go through a case over the weekend. Well, that's 24 beers. That's 240 grams of absolute alcohol. That's a, that's a lot. That's too much. It's the same as drinking anything else. That's what, that, that's what we just spoke about. So one and a half ounces of, uh, of vodka, whiskey, or rum is the same as six ounces of wine, 12 ounces of beer. So the yeah, same again, thing. one should not comfort the, oneself in thinking one type of drink is safer than another. It's all about the amount of alcohol. No, it's all the same. It's, it's, it has, it has the same. I guess you probably it would be safer to avoid those 
um, those few hard liquors that have uh, that are super high proof, I think is in their rum that's 151 proof or something like that. Um, that would be very easy to go over the limits with. Exactly. Well, the, the, the worrisome thing about alcohol is, first of all, it can cause a spectrum of problems in and of itself. They can range from things like just plain fat uh, to inflammation to a very severe form called alcoholic hepatitis, which brings people into the hospital and may cause their death. But even if none of the severe episodes occurs, it is a smoldering disease that over years and sometimes decades can lead to advanced scarring known as cirrhosis and uh, necessitate liver transplant if the patient is otherwise eligible and they've stopped drinking. But it's also important to remember that alcohol can synergize with other causes of liver disease. And in particular, as Dr. Dieterich knows better than me, we have a growing fraction of our practices who are seeing patients who have so-called fatty liver disease associated with obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia. And it's very well recognized that alcohol is kind of a synergizer that will make the disease from fatty liver disease and obesity much worse. And that's true also for viral hepatitis B and C. Doug, you want to add? Yeah, absolutely. Well, actually, because the uh, the other epidemic that um, uh, that has actually uh, taken off exponentially during COVID is is IV heroin use, which actually goes along with hepatitis C, and that actually has the same uh, exponential rise during the two years of of COVID as alcohol has. So hepatitis C and alcohol together can synergistically damage the liver many times faster than either one uh, by themselves. And one other point is that I think you asked about how, do was, how does one know if alcohol is damaging the liver? First of all, most of the time patients don't know. There are no specific symptoms, even when the damage is pretty aggressive and severe, they may feel weak. Certainly if it's very advanced or severe, their eyes may turn yellow, their urine may become dark. These are uh, features of a disordered liver excretion, but it also may manifest as elevated liver tests if the individual goes to see the physician uh, and he or she can do additional tests, including an ultrasound to see if there's fat in the liver or a bedside test that Dr. Dieterich is an expert in called FibroScan that can assess whether the liver is getting stiff from the effects of scarring and inflammation on the liver. So there are ways to know, but it's equally important to recognize that there are a lot of times when patients have smoldering damage in the liver and nobody senses it, uh, they don't have blood tests done and they don't have any symptoms. So just because you feel okay and you're drinking heavily doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, prevent you from developing serious liver problems. I think it's important too to uh, sort of ask your, your primary care doctor who's ever drawing your blood to take a hard look at your liver enzymes because uh, lots of times primary care people will dismiss low level liver enzyme elevations, um, you know, as just a one binge or one martini or something. And one martini does not cause the liver enzymes to go up. It's one martini three times a day for, you know, several years will, will cause it to go up, but not once on Saturday night. Yeah, that's a really important point. And also those modest elevations can be uh, just a uh, a red flag, even though doctors tend to say, as Dr. Dietrich said, they'll say, oh, don't worry about it. It's just mild elevations, but those can really be a, a sign that something much more sinister is brewing and they need to be followed up. That's a really important question. And it depends on how severe the damage is in the first place. For patients who have drunk to the extent where they have cirrhosis, uh, that very advanced stage, the liver may never return to normal. Uh, if they have more mod mild or moderate uh, damage to the liver, I've seen miraculous recoveries, and I'm sure Doug has as well, of people who really looked deathly ill, had high liver tests, and got themselves in an alcohol rehab program, remained abstinent, and their liver function returned to normal, but usually over six to 12 months. But that's under the best of circumstances. So remember that uh, there is a point of no return when even stopping drinking is too late. Yeah, it takes a long time. And actually, oftentimes, alcoholic hepatitis, the acute inflammation caused by alcohol will get worse for the first six or eight weeks before it starts to get better. Um, so it can be really scary. And then, as Scott said, once if you hit a set point of cirrhosis, this is the kind of cirrhosis that actually just never seems to get better. 
the cirrhosis that's caused by other things that we can treat uh, oftentimes resolves. But this alcoholic cirrhosis seems to be different. And once you've got it, you've got it. <clears throat> and it never really gets better. It reaches a set point and sort of that's it for the rest of your life. Having, having that kind of cirrhotic condition makes you very susceptible to other diseases. Your infection, uh, you're more susceptible to infections. You may not mount as much of a good immune response to vaccines, which is quite relevant in the COVID era. And uh, it may make you especially sensitive to toxicities of drugs, even at doses that are within the prescribing range. In particular, things that contain Tylenol or acetaminophen are especially toxic in patients who have underlying alcoholic liver disease. And we've seen patients who were taking, you know, prescribed or reason so-called reasonable amounts of Tylenol didn't realize that their underlying alcoholic liver disease was amplifying the damage from that Tylenol. They ended up needing a liver transplant. So, uh, you know, a, a, a sick liver from alcohol when it's in advanced stages has many damaging effects throughout the body. That includes the heart, uh, the nervous system, uh, the pancreas, as well as the liver. That's easy. There's a, one phone number to call, 212-241-7270. Uh, it's answered 24-7, uh, but uh, much better to call during business hours. And also... Uh, Patients can book appointments on ZocDoc.com, or you can Google Inst Mount Sinai Institute for Liver Medicine, and you'll uh, see our list of outstanding providers led by Dr. Dietrich. We have, we have sites uh, all over the metropolitan area, uh, Westchester, Long Island, and, uh, and um, most of the, uh, of the five boroughs.